Hello, dear students. So, in this session, I am going to continue the thermodynamics part 2. In our previous class, so we had a brief introduction about thermodynamics, what is meant by thermodynamics. So, it is a branch of science which deals with the energy changes accompanying physical and chemical transformations. So, this is what the thermodynamics is meant by. And also, we discussed that thermodynamics is applicable to macroscopic system consisting of matter in bulk and it is not applicable to microscopic system consisting of atoms, ions or molecules. And so, to understand thermodynamics in a better way, so we need to uh, be familiar with certain terms which we are going to use throughout the study of thermodynamics. So, in that, so in our last class, we discussed about system, what do we mean by a system and what is a surrounding and how do we classify the system. Say, for example, what is a open system, closed system and isolated system. So, all these were discussed in our last class and also a state of a system and what is a state of a system and what are called as state variables. So, here we stopped in our last class. So, in this session, I am going to discuss about what is meant by a process. Okay? If a system changes from one equilibrium state to another, then it is said to have undergone a process. Say for example, a system will be adjusted to a surrounding. Okay? So, system will be surrounded by certain objects or substances, what we call them as surroundings. Okay? So, it will have a equilibrium with the surrounding. Say for example, a simple example I will give. So, uh, let us imagine uh, ourselves as a system. So, if we are in Bantwal or in Mangalore, the weather or uh, uh, temperature will be a little bit uh, heat or uh, raised. Okay? So, we feel uh, heat in this uh, area. So, we will adjust to this temperature itself. Whereas, if we go to uh, Uti or Madikeri, so there the temperature will be quite less, not quite less, it is very less. Okay. So, that means, uh, so that temperature is called as a surrounding and we are the systems. So, we are going to adjust, that is what is called as equilibrium. We will manage our temperature with the surrounding temperature. Okay. So, when this happens, when the equilibrium state changes from one state to the another state then it is called as a uh, process okay so there are uh, three uh, main process what we are going to observe uh, not three four main process including the irreversible process also so we can observe uh, four main process that can takes place okay so how do we classify this process so the classification of this process will be dependent on the path taken that means so uh, whether it is a uh, reversible or whether it is irreversible or what we call as the thermodynamic parameters like temperature volume and pressure so are they going to change their equilibrium state one uh, state from one to another so that is studied in this process okay so mainly the types of process on the basis of path taken we'll see the first one as a isothermal process okay so it is a process in which the temperature of the system remains constant that is dt is equals to zero in isothermal process so the temperature will be kept constant and all other parameters like volume pressure density all these are studied by considering temperature as constant such an process such a process is called as isothermal process for example, so any chemical reaction taking place in a thermostat or a cryostat is considered as an example of isothermal process. And the next one is a adiabatic process. Okay. So it is a process in which no heat is exchanged between the system and the surroundings. So heat is represented as 
dq so here dq or dt so that is uh, the difference or differential what we call it uh, in terms of uh, mathematics so difference uh, in temperature will be equals to zero and here the difference in heat q is represented as a heat here and difference in q that is heat will be equals to zero so such a process we will not observe the change in heat okay so no heat is exchanged between the system and surroundings such a type of process is called as a adiabatic process for example so joel thomson's experiment so what does the joel thomson experiment says about that we will discuss in our uh, next classes and the next uh, process is a reversible process okay so what is meant by a reversible process is defined as a process which may be reversed at any instant by changing the driving force by an infinitesimal amount okay so as the name itself says uh, so reversible process means say for example if for temperature or heat is exchanged from a to b again that temperature the amount of temperature or heat uh, sorry i uh, i will use the word as heat because temperature is a measure of heat okay so if a uh, certain amount of heat is transferred from a to b so again from b to a that amount of heat can be transferred that means uh, so that is a reversible process we can exchange okay so we can change the uh, reversible process by the driving force by an infinitesimal amount for example reversible expansion of a gas so here in this example so let us consider as so this container or this beaker has got uh, so much uh, amount of uh, uh, chemical or a gas which is measured in terms of m1 and its temperature is t1 and its pressure so the pressure which is uh, exerted by that gas which is present here is represented as p1 and this is a volume okay so how much volume is there so it is represented as v1 so it is uh, during the thermodynamic process so t1 that is temperature is going to get changed into t2 similarly p1 the pressure so much so much amount of pressure say for example 30 atmospheric pressure so that will get converted into 60 atmospheric pressure and in the same way volume v1 say for example some 10 ml will be get uh, uh, into changed to uh, some other amount of uh, volume that is v2 and next uh, so if we reverse this process say for example all these experimental conditions has been carried out uh, in a certain uh, by keeping some temperature pressure and volume and if we are going to increase the same thing so we are going to get a difference value of temperature pressure and volume and if we reduce or if we decrease that uh, amount what we have raised uh, so again it can uh, get reversible to the initial state so such type of uh, process is called as a reversible process anta next is a, what is meant by irreversible so as the name itself says so here uh, if the transfer of temperature or pressure or volume takes place uh, if it gets increased or decreased uh, so it cannot come back to the initial state that means so uh, the process will continue it's not like the process is going to get stopped the process will continue but it is not reversible to the initial state it will not come to the initial state so such process is called as irreversible process that means how do we define an irreversible process is uh, an irreversible process is one which occurs spontaneously without the restriction of occurring in successive stages of infinitesimal quantities so this is how we are going to define a reversible process and next is the uh, properties of a system there are mainly two types of properties so if we consider a system a system is an uh, object or where we are going to study the differences in the thermodynamical parameters like uh, pressure volume density etc etc so that is what is called as a system and what are the properties the properties of a system can be mainly distinguished as one is extensive property and the second one is a uh, intensive property so what is meant by a uh, extensive property <laughs> the property 
whose magnitude or size depends on the amount of matter present in the system is called extensive property so that means uh, so here the property of this system depends upon how much amount of uh, matter is present in it that means say for example if i take volume so the volume as we increase the uh, volume size so the different thermodynamical parameters also will get increased say for example i will give you an example so one is uh, take a water take a water so in one beaker 10 ml and in another beaker 100 ml you will take okay and you you will start boiling the water you will keep the beakers in two uh, burners and you will start uh, boiling the water so does the time required for the water to boil is same so for the 10 ml water in the beaker it will get boiled in very short time whereas the 100 ml water will take so much time means uh, uh, comparatively more time than the 10 ml water okay so here let us keep the temperature as the same okay temperature is constant that is the boiling point of water is 100 degree centigrade no so we will fix that temperature 100 degree centigrade centigrade okay but the time required for the 10 ml water to reach 100 degree centigrade is different from the time required by 100 ml water so that is uh, uh, what the extensive property explains about that means this property extensive property it depends upon the magnitude or the size of the matter which is present in the system okay so the extensive properties are additive additive means as we go on adding uh, the matter to that uh, particular uh, uh, system so it is uh, it will get increased say for example 10 ml water 100 ml water 250 ml water obviously the two, 250 ml water it takes more time to reach 100 degree centigrade compared to the 100 ml of water so in this way it is an additive property that means as the magnitude of the matter increases the extensive properties also gets increased okay for example so volume as i took the example of volume so it is a uh, extensive property as we go on increase the uh, volume of uh, uh, water or any chemical substance uh, so the chem thermodynamical parameters like temperature pressure density so all these uh, are going to get increased and internal energy internal energy is uh, another thing so the energy which has been uh, exhibited by the atoms or molecules which are present in that system as the matter or the size of the matter increases the amount of atoms and molecules which are present in that system also gets increased okay so due to this reason so the extensive property is also going to get increased as we increase the internal energy uh, is increased due to the big size of the matter which is present and also enthalpy so enthalpy entropy and number of moles uh, and gives free energy mass all these are some of the examples of uh, extensive properties and what you what is meant by intensive property so the property whose magnitude does not depend it is opposite to the extensive property which does not depends upon the amount of water uh, sorry matter present in the system say for example temperature pressure density okay so whatever uh, for example uh, which i took uh, to explain the extensive property itself so the boiling point of water is 100 degree centigrade that we all know that okay even though if it is 10 ml 100 ml or 1000 ml the boiling point of water is 100 degree only it is not getting changed okay and the density density will be same uh, say for example if we have taken 100 ml of water uh, does the density is going to get changed no the density will be same the boiling point will be same okay 
and concentration say for example we have prepared 0.1 normal of nacl solution so if we prepare 10 ml of 0.1 normal concentration solution then also the concentration will be same and if we pr prepare it for 100 ml so then also the concentration will be same that means uh, so the property is not depended on the size of the matter or the amount of the matter which is present in the system okay so this is what is uh, called as a intensive property and next is uh, what is meant by state functions state functions or state variables so they are determined by the initial and final states of the system only and not by the path followed okay so how the change is going to take place that is not considered in state functions so what was the condition in the initial state and what is the condition at the final state so that is what is recorded so there such a type of functions or variables are called as state functions okay so they are determined considering only the initial state and final state for example internal energy okay so internal energy is also called as a state function that is because so here the internal energy is measured in the initial state before the thermodynamical reaction takes place how how much was the internal energy and at the end of the reaction so what was the change in the internal energy is measured but the path how the internal energy is going to take place that we cannot measure and it is not at all observed also because it is a molecular level study that means we have to look into the atoms and molecules and we have to study how the change from initial state to the final state is uh, going to take place that path is not studied that much easily so for that reason so this internal energy is called as a state function or a state variable similarly the enthalpy the change in heat so the enthalpy is also considered as a state function and pressure and temperature so temperature also we can observe the change in temperature say for example from 30 degree to 60 degree 80 degree the temperature is going to get changed but uh, here we are not going to consider the path how it is uh, uh, attained or how it is reached to a maximum temperature that path is not determined so that is why so the state variables or state functions uh, are determined by the initial and final states of the system and not by the path followed and next one is the path functions so state variables on the contrary which are determined or depend on the path followed are called as path functions so as the name itself says for example work done and heat absorbed so the both here work done and heat absorbed so both will be studied both will be considered how much amount of heat has been absorbed and by utilizing that amount that amount of heat how much of work has been done so that is studied so here we are controlling the path we are monitoring the path how much of heat has been transferred from one system to the other system and how much of work is done that is studied so here we the path is very important we are going to uh, follow the path so that is why so this is considered as a path functions and next one is uh, internal energy so as i told so internal energy is a energy which is associated with the definite amount of energy which depends upon its chemical nature as well as upon its temperature pressure and volume okay so every system has got internal energy every system uh, every system is made up of atoms and molecules so there will be a uh, friction if you think it in a molecular way so there say for example a uh, water uh, taken in a beaker so there uh, so h2 will be there and oxygen will be there hydrogen two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen uh, atom will be present so they both uh, will be connected through the bonds and it is what is called as molecule there will be a avogadro number of molecules will be present in the water so each single single molecule or atoms so they will come in contact with each other they will be bombarding they will have a uh, electrostatic force of attraction okay so there so that movement of uh, the molecules or the atoms that will create uh, create an uh, 
energy what is called as internal energy okay so each and every system will be associated with definite amount of energy so this depends upon the chemical nature if it if it is surrounded by uh, bulky uh, atoms uh, so due to the steric hindrance uh, definitely it will have higher internal energy uh, and if the molecules or the atoms which are present which are surrounded is of uh, uh, lesser atomic mass so definitely it will not feel that much of a steric hindrance and the movement or the uh, velocity of the atoms or the molecules will be very less uh, this will result in the uh, lower internal energy okay so in this way the internal energy depends upon the um, it depends upon the chemical nature chemical nature as well as uh, it depends upon temperature pressure and volume okay so this is uh, uh, the energy which is possessed by the atoms and molecules totally it is called as internal energy so internal energy is nothing but the total amount of energy present in a system it is made up of a number of components such as rotational vibrational translational bond electronic energies so this is what i explained so a molecule or a atom will have a vibrational so it will be vibrating so in a solution i took an example of water so there the two hydrogens and one oxygen atom which is present so it is not a, a, a state variable or it will not it is not fixed so it will have the movement so that movement of atoms or molecules will create various types of energies like rotational energy vibrational energy and translational energy as the molecules they rotate so they will possess rotational energy and they will have a vibration that vibration will create a vibrational energy so considering all these energies which are possessed by the number of components which are present in the system so we call it as internal energy so internal energy is a sum of all the energies like rotational energy vibrational energy translational energy and bond electronic energies etc there are many other energies which are possessed by the atoms or molecules which are present in the uh, system okay so all this is uh, indicated or represented by a symbol u that is capital letter symbol that represents the internal energy the absolute wall value of internal energy of a system cannot be measured okay exact value of internal energy because it will get changed the rotational energy and because it is a sum if it is uh, uh, measured by any one or two parameters definitely we can calculate the absolute uh, value for the internal energy this depends upon various different uh, uh, process which is going to take place in the system so it is not uh, possible to find out the absolute value however so it is possible to evaluate uh, a change in internal energy that is so what is the change so in the first experimental condition what was the internal energy of that particular system and as this thermodynamic process takes place that is the conversion or the chemical transformation from one system to the another system when it changes so what changes has been uh, happened and what happened to the inter internal energy exactly so that can be measured so which is uh, uh, represented as a delta u so here delta is the difference uh, uh, and u is the internal energy delta u means uh, the change in internal energy of a system uh, is measured and okay so if the internal energy of the system changes from u1 to u2 okay so u1 is one experimental condition where the internal energy of a system is found to be u1 and it gets changed to u2 so here u is the internal energy one and two are the two different thermodynamical uh, reactions which we are going to study in one system it is uh, u1 and in another system as the thermodynamic process proceeds uh, so the internal energy is going to be changed to u2 from u1 to u2 it is going to get changed then so the difference or the change in internal energy is represented as delta u is equals to 
u2 minus u1 okay so we'll consider u2 first so it can be a negative or it can be a positive we need not to worry about that so uh, since uh, u2 is a second process what is going to happen so u1 is the initial so we are going to uh, write the representation in this form that is delta u is equals to u2 minus u1 in the same way for a chemical reaction if we take a chemical reaction then the change in internal energy that is delta u is equals to so change in internal energy of the products so here p is called as products minus the change in internal energy of a reactants okay so this is how we are going to represent for a chemical reaction so delta u that is change in internal energy of a system changes with temperature pressure volume etc okay internal energy will be changed it is not a uh, uh, fixed one so it is going to get changed hence it is a state variable so the example of a change in internal energy is an uh, is a uh, extensive property okay so delta u is an example for extensive property that uh, we have already seen here while discussing this uh, uh, state uh, functions so we uh, studied that uh, the change in internal energy is an example of extensive property and the si unit of uh, change in internal energy is uh, joule per mole joule per mole is the si unit and next is the uh, enthalpy so so here we should uh, keep it in mind one is uh, so there are four the thermodynamic uh, uh, laws uh, we call them as laws of thermodynamics so there in each uh, law we are going to study one one uh, important parameter that is the first law of thermodynamics explains about enthalpy the second law of uh, thermodynamics it explains about entropy and the third law of thermodynamics it is going to explain about gibbs free energy okay so each uh, uh, thermodynamic laws uh, uh, speaks about one particular term so that is uh, what we are going to discuss in deep in each uh, sections okay so first we will see what is meant by enthalpy so it is also called as heat content of a system and it is represented in uh, sim by the symbol h that is capital letter h if you write capital letter h in this uh, uh, discussion that is in thermodynamics it means uh, uh, enthalpy so what is meant by enthalpy the thermal changes at constant pressure are expressed in terms of thermodynamic functions called enthalpy so what are the thermal changes that going to takes place thermal changes means usually the th change in term uh, temperature it takes place because of the change in heat the heat is going to get changed it will be uh, converted from one state to the another state so this thermal changes at constant pressure this is very important so here pressure is kept constant in enthalpy so pressure will be constant at constant pressure so what are the thermal changes that are going to take place so that is expressed uh, in terms of uh, thermodynamic functions uh, that is called the enthalpy so here h is equals to u plus p v okay so here u is the internal energy so u is what uh, we studied in uh, uh, in the last uh, part so u is called as a uh, internal energy and uh, p is the pressure here p is called as pressure and v is called the volume of the system okay so when the enthalpy of a system changes from h1 to h2 that means uh, so here uh, we have performed a thermodynamic reaction so what was the enthalpy in the initial state and what is the enthalpy once after the reaction is uh, completed so what is the enthalpy so we, here we are going to get uh, two different enthalpies okay so it is represented as uh, h2 and h1 okay h2 uh, is the enthalpy of a uh, uh, final uh, step and h1 is the enthalpy of the inici initial step so therefore the change in enthalpy delta h is represented as h2 minus h1 for a chemical reaction so delta h will be equal to the enthalpy of a product 
minus the enthalpy of reactants okay so this is how we are going to represent it in general enthalpy change for an any process at a constant pressure is calculated using the formula delta h is equals to delta u minus p delta v this is because so enthalpy is a study of thermal changes where we have kept constant pressure so that is why here the pressure is not going to get changed here the internal energy will be changed and the change in volume is observed by keeping pressure as constant so that is why delta h that is change in enthalpy delta h is equals to change in internal energy minus pressure what we have kept and change in volume or it can also be written as delta h is equals to delta u plus rt into delta n so where delta n is equals to number of moles of gaseous products minus number of moles of gaseous reactants okay so we are going to uh, find out delta n that is the change in uh, number of moles uh, of the gaseous products and the gaseous reactants okay so this is how we are going to represent or we are going to study the enthalpy that is heat content of a system and next is uh, so enthalpy of a system changes with temperature pressure and volume okay so enthalpy is going to get changed so hence uh, it is a state variable and it is also an example for extensive property just like how we have seen here the internal energy so internal energy also changes with the temperature pressure volume so that is why it is a state variable and it is a example for extensive property in the same way enthalpy is also changes uh, with temperature pressure and volume and hence it is called as a state vari variable and is an example of a uh, extensive property and the change in enthalpy is also uh, represented uh, in joules bar per mole and okay so the unit of uh, enthalpy change is joule per mole and next uh, so what are the iup uh, uh, iupac sign convention of heat and work and okay so just like uh, in organic chemistry how we see iupac nomenclature so iupac nomenclature is uh, done with uh, uh, certain rules and regulations we, we we cannot call them or we cannot uh, name a organic compound uh, by our own uh, way okay so uh, say for example so we give, we will call um, Uh, the chemicals in common name whereas uh, if we have to write uh, those chemicals in uh, iupac format so definitely we have to follow some certain rules and regulations in the same way so the iupac uh, also have given some sign convention of uh, heat and work so this uh, sign uh, describes that uh, so what has happened in that particular experiment say for example if we take uh, uh, q that is a small letter q so q is equals to positive if we write like this q is equals to positive then it is understood as heat is absorbed okay heat is absorbed that is what uh, q is equals to positive if we write so it is absorbed and if we write w that is a small letter small letter w is equals to positive then it means work done on the system so some work has been done on the system it might be anything the change in temperature or a change in volume change in pressure change in enthalpy change in internal energy whatever it is so w is equals to positive if we write it means that work done on the system some work some change uh, has been done on the system in the same way if we write small letter q which is equals to negative then it is called as heat liberated okay so q positive means heat absorbed q negative means heat is liberated and w negative means work done by the system okay so work done by the system will be same whatever it is the increase in the temperature volume pressure is also work done decrease in the temperature volume pressure enthalpy internal energy that is also a work means there is a change we can observe some change uh, which has been happened there due to the 
reaction thermodynamic reaction what has been taken place it, it doesn't matter whether the temperature has been increased whether the volume is increased whether the pressure is increased whether the uh, enthalpy is increased whatever it, it, it can get increased or it may get decreased okay so uh, what and all the changes if a change takes place in that system then it is called as work done so that is why so w is equals to negative if we write so that uh, that also means that uh, uh, work done and if we write w is equals to positive then work done on the system okay so this is how we are going to uh, assign uh, the sign convention uh, based on iupac uh, on heat and work on the okay so here if we if you observe so a beautiful picture has been shown here so where uh, the green color which is uh, which you are seeing here so that is what is called a system and which is surrounded uh, is the surroundings are represented in yellow color so here in the system uh, so the uh, work is going to take place so that is here q plus that means heat in heat in what does heat in means so heat is absorbed okay so and here w plus so that means w plus as i told work done on the system okay so from the system so this heat is coming uh, towards the system that is why you observe this arrow mark so heat is coming towards the system the system is absorbing the heat and work is done on the system okay so that is why it is represented as q plus or uh, uh, plus w and from the system heat is uh, going out heat out so the arrow mark is shown towards the surrounding not towards the system from the system it is moving out it is the heat is moving towards the su surrounding so that is why it is called minus q that means heat is liberated in the same way so here the work done by the system the system uh, has been undergone some work and here this is represented as minus w okay so here all together so delta e is equals to so that is the change in enthalpy or uh, uh, the change in energy sorry delta e is uh, the change in energy so which will be equal to q plus w that means uh, how much amount of heat has been absorbed or heat has been liberated plus uh, work done by the system will give us the value of uh, delta e n okay so this is what about iu pack sign convention of heat and work on so in our next class we will see in detail what does the first law of thermodynamics is going to explain about thank you